But George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Can we call for that deliberate right away? Praise God. Let's not miss it. Say, Father, I demand today my daily bread, and I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now we are looking at walking in spiritual financial intelligence are you ready to go into today's talk father we honor you today your will is being done on earth in our lives just the same way it is written in heaven thank you for your truth is being brought forth and it's not just by us it is by the spirit of truth we give you praise, Lord. I declare right now, every body is lifted. Every yoke is destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, I, I was sharing with you yesterday how I took a decision back then when I was in school. Because I, I saw all these things in scriptures. I listened to many messages on God's blessing, prosperity. I listened to all those things and I had to take a decision. Now, this one thing I tell you, you haven't heard the word of God yet until you take a decision based on the word you have heard. Another way I always put this is the end of every meditation is a decision. Now, say I'm meditating on something. By the time you are done, just like the Bible says, God actually told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night so that you will observe to do now. By the time you get to the observing to do, you must have taken a decision first. So when you set out to meditate on anything, the end of that meditation must be a decision that you take. Is that clear? Praise God. So I took that decision then when I was still in school. I said, if these things I'm reading, if these things I'm hearing is true, then let's put it to work. How did I put it to work? I made up my mind from henceforth. I'm not going to bring my pocket money from home to school. As soon as I receive my pocket money, I'm going to sow it out as a seed. Now, as at that time, I will be truthful to you. I wasn't sowing need because I want to receive a hundredfold harvest. No, sir. My primary reason for sowing it then was to make myself without nothing. See, and I just wanted to prove that God can show up in my life. And I will never forget the, the, the first time I did that thing, I actually saw miracle money. And I don't want to go on in that, but, but I want to focus on the second one now. The second one was the amazing one. Because the first one, I just saw money and, and you can really tell, okay, um, the process that walked behind the money getting to, to me or getting to where I saw it. Now, so put that as about it was a miracle. I, I recognize it was a miracle. The second one, the second, but that was the second semester now after I made that decision. So I was going back to school. And I got this money. My parents had given me money. Normal, like they give you pocket money, not school fees. Praise God. So the pocket money, you, I, I sold it immediately. I received it. I, I sold it back at home. And then, because I, I couldn't tell my parents that, look, don't give me money again. If I could, maybe I, I would have done so. Like I said, I wasn't doing this because I wanted, my mindset then was not to sow seed. My mindset then was just to prove that the world works. So nobody was encouraging me to sow seed. Nobody was telling me, oh, you need to plant so that you receive. That was not what I was responding to. This was a personal 
question that I was dealing with in my heart. If this thing really works, then I want to see it work in me. You know, so I I obeyed, uh, I, I did that. Now, at that point, I, I couldn't really tell you if God spoke to me that I should start doing this. I, I really can't tell you that, to be honest with you. But I knew I had meditated on this thing enough that I made that decision that this is this would be my lifestyle from henceforth. So I gave that money the second semester now, and then I traveled all the way, you know, night bus then, you know, left Port Harcourt, got to Zaria. While I was there, early morning I arrived there about 5 a.m. and I tried to put the room in shape so that I could sleep. About 9 a.m. the same morning I arrived, someone knocked on my door. And when I opened, they said, oh, you're around? I said, yes, I am. You know, and then we got talking and how's the break and blah, blah. And then when we finished, he, he, he brought out an envelope and he handed it over to me. I said, oh, what's this? And then he said, last night while I was praying, the Lord said, I should come and give you this. Like, whoa, you know. And he, we prayed together and then he left. Now, when he left, I opened the envelope. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't know how I was going to eat by the next, by that month. I didn't know. Maybe the best I would have done, you know, then when you travel to school, there's, there's some food stuff, you know, they pack for you. And maybe the best I would have done is maybe to look for how to work out something with what I had. But financially, I was at zero that morning. And then when he left, I counted the money. It was 5,000 naira. I will never forget many years ago. This was something around, this is something around 1999, 98, 99, somewhere around that time. And I, I looked at that and I, I was like, whoa. I played the whole thing in my mind. He said, the Lord asked him last night, so when I was traveling through the night, wondering how I was going to be sustained by the time I get to school, God was speaking to someone concerning me that same night. I went on my knees that day and I said, Lord, anything you want me to do, tell me I'll do it. Praise God. Yeah. Now, that made an impression. I have to take you back to this story. That made a deep impression in my heart that God could speak to people to come and give you money. I've never experienced that. That was my first. That was my first. Now, people can dash you money. You can go to someone's house and dash. But that someone will leave his place. We never had any interaction like... Oh, I need money or no, there was no such interaction. There were, I don't think we, we didn't have mobile phones then. I can't remember. We didn't have mobile phones then. See, so I like, okay, so how did this happen? All right. So that made a deep impression in my heart. But even after that, I was still getting broke, you know, until the Lord now taught me. This was many years afterwards. The Lord now taught me concerning offerings and things like that. So that also put aside. And I began to practice this offering thing. I mean, now I will never forget, you know, whatever. I, I will look for a Sunday service. I look forward to Sunday service. And, and I will always ask the Lord, Lord, where do you want me to go to church tomorrow? See, because I had left the church I was attending then. And that was when the Lord was calling. Of course, the Lord had already called me into ministry, into doing what I'm doing. And But then he told me not to start a church, remember? So I was like, okay, Lord, so, so where should I go to church? Now, one of the biggest motivations to go into church was so that I could give an offering. I'm telling you the truth. Because now I've learned something that must I must practice every week. I didn't want to get broke. I didn't want to get in need. Because the Lord had told me what to do. So I began to practice that. And one day, I was fellowshipping with the Lord. Because now, beyond my needs, 
the ministry needs were now beginning to come up. Because now the Lord will tell you, oh, go do this. You know, oh, then, you know, print tracks and do this and, and do that. So, and I had made up my mind when I got into ministry that I will never discuss finances with anybody in terms of asking for money where ministry is concerned. I had to tell the Lord that from the beginning. I said, Lord, I won't do it. If you cannot speak to people where we are concerned, then forget it. Let's not even go into it. And the Lord confirmed that word to me. He said, you won't, I would not let you do it. I said, okay, fine. So while I was fellowshipping with the Lord in that regard, and one time the Lord said this to me, I, I, you know, you, you don't forget these experiences. Because as I'm speaking, I remember the tone in which he spoke to me. And, and I knew it was a laughing tone he spoke then. He laughed at me. I, I can't remember exactly what I said to him, but he laughed at me and then he said, son, you don't realize I've got lots of money on the earth. And I was like, yeah, I know the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He says, no, you're, get, you're not getting the point. I said, okay, what's the point, Lord? And then he said, I've got a lot of money on the earth that you don't know about. I said, which money? And then he said to me, the tithe. I was like, the tithe? Yeah. And then I said, yeah, but, but, but then you said I should not start a church. So why, why are you talking to me about tithe? He said, that's your problem. You see, now this is real fellowshipping with the Lord. And, and I'm telling you my story. So don't start bringing your own theology into it. If your theology doesn't have, doesn't support your real experience, then something is wrong. So he said to me, and I can't be lying against him. He said, the tithe. I said, yeah. But he said, I shouldn't start a church. So why are you talking to me about tithe? He said, that's your problem. You think the tithe is for the church. I said, but that's what we've been used to. That's what we are told. Tithe where you are feeding from. And then the Lord said, hey, hey. Who does the tithe belong to? I said, God, you? And then he said, Oh, Marukasha, brother. He said to me, he said, Am I dumb? I said, No. And then he said, Why don't you ask me? If you say the money belongs to me, why don't you ask me first what you are supposed to do with my money? Oh, Libarushi. You know how you just sit down, just all of a sudden you feel like a big fool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you just, you like, come, come, come to think of it. It's his money. We, the tithe belongs to God. The tithe belongs to God. Yes. Oh, we don't ask him. And then he gave me this illustration I will never forget. He said, imagine, I, I use it every day when I teach on tithing. He said, imagine you having a business dealings with someone in, in, in Lagos. And then the person calls you and says, ah, that, that business with you say, yeah, they paid the money. In fact, I just went to the bank now to collect it. So oh, that's good. And then the person now says to you, you know what? While I was at the bank, he remember that your cousin introduced to me like four years ago, you know, that your cousin that stays at uh, Mikoi. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I, do you know I met him at the bank? And when I met him, I said, oh, goody. So I cut your own share and I gave it to him. I'm sure, I'm sure he will, he will call you and he will get it to you. Now, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to hail him and say, oh, you're such a good person. You're such a wise guy. Is that what you're going to do? No, I'll tell you what. Who told you to give it? Did I send you that? You better go and collect that money from me. Stop telling me all these nonsense. Just see. Why? Because you didn't tell him. And he said, but, but he's your cousin. He said, listen, why couldn't you call me first? And then the Lord said, but that's what you guys do to me. And the Lord said to me, he says, many times my children tithe, but I don't receive it. The church will receive it, but doesn't mean 
that God have received it. So he said to me, he said, that's why my children are still suffering, despite the fact that they tithe and they do, you know, all these things. And then the Lord said that it's by my, because of my mercy, if I'm going to be legalistic, lots of my children will go under. But because of my mercy, but then this is the truth. This is the true way. I'm like, whoa. I never knew this. Nobody ever preached this to me. Nobody ever taught me this. And that moved me into another realm of financial intelligence with the Spirit of God. Praise God. I'm going to continue from here tomorrow. I pray for you today that these words are truly opening up, opening up God's heart to you. And as you begin to yield to the Holy Spirit to really teach you on this, you begin to see a marvelous experience in Him that will increase the power and the glory of God in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.